This video introduces the concept of the house as a system. We'll begin with the story of Grandma's house and some systems interactions that took place there. We'll take a look at different types of systems interactions for us to be aware of, and we'll talk about some of the most important types of interactions that we'll look out for as we try to do home energy assessments. Grandma's house began as a well-ventilated but older and inefficient home, and one very much in need of some insulation. So a insulation contractor was hired and the house was insulated but uh, then condensation began to take place in the attic as the warm moist air from the home uh, reached the cooler spaces in the attic and condensed. So the way to take care of that is to seal up the house and keep that warm moist air from entering the attic but then the moisture began to condense inside the home on the walls because that warm moist air hit a cold wall, condensed, and water then led to mold growth. So the way to address that is to insulate the walls so they're not so cold and so the water doesn't condense. And also add some ventilation because now we have a sealed house uh, that doesn't allow much air to pass through. Uh, but then that was found to create a depressurization of the house and instead of the wood stove creating heat and venting, uh, it didn't burn properly and could create some dangerous problems with carbon monoxide. So this is a good example of how uh, one change in a house uh, can result in different consequences and we often need to think about a series of actions to take in a home, not just do one thing at a time. And hopefully end up with a house that performs well and is healthy for the occupants. So let's take a look at some different systems interactions that we should be conscious of in a home. Uh, and some things that are going on. So moisture can enter into our homes uh, through concrete floors. Uh, it could be introduced um, by a slope of a house where water is introduced um, at the edge of the foundations. Um, gutters and downspots are an important part of keeping our house dry. They need to collect that water and get it away from the house. So we'll be looking for things like that. Um, moisture is also introduced into homes from cooking and showering. Uh, and uh, our bathrooms and kitchens, for example, are one place where we might have an excess of warm, moist air uh, that, that needs to be ventilated to the outside. So hence having uh, shower uh, and bathroom ventilation fans and also ventilation fans in our kitchens. Air infiltration can take place at windows and doors. And this is a case where cold air from the outside gets inside and adds to our heating load. Garages are important because they can be a source of carbon monoxide. Our um, cars uh, emit carbon monoxide when they're running and uh, we need to take steps to make sure that uh, no harmful carbon monoxide is introduced to the home. Exfiltration, uh, which really talks about air escaping the house instead of infiltration, can take place as heat gathers in cathedral ceilings and that uh, heat will tend to want to drive in a outside and escape the house. Um, recessed light fixtures are also uh, a very common source of, of losing heat inside a home that we'll talk about in more detail a little bit later. The occupants also are a very important part of the system uh, in a house. Uh, how they use energy, uh, the temperatures uh, that they set their thermostats to, how long they take hot showers are some of the most dominant factors that affect uh, the house as a system. Some of the most important types of interaction uh, are the fact that if we take an old leaky house and seal it up uh, to reduce its heat loss, uh, we can have some ventilation problems. Uh, for example, uh, if a furnace isn't burning cleanly and we seal up a house, now the harmful fumes from the furnace could accumulate inside the house and make people sick. Uh, some system interactions are good ones. For example, if we replace a lot of incandescent light bulbs, uh, they actually give off light, but also heat. Uh, replacing them can actually reduce the cooling requirements in a space. So sometimes those system interactions can work for us, and those are the ones we try to look for. Insulating ho a homeowner, uh, <laughs> insulating a home can actually, in many cases, result in a homeowner deciding to say, well, I spent that money in insulation, I'm much more efficient now, I'm going to bump that thermostat up a little bit and be a little bit more comfortable. And then when their heating bill comes, they see they're not saving as much heat as they were promised, and 
uh, it's all a result of the fact that they changed their thermostat setting. So one of the challenges for leaders is to see the house as a system of interactions between the inside and the outside, between the travel of heat and moisture, and most importantly, the choices and decisions that a homeowner makes inside that home.